Okay, we're going to go over how to calculate the future value of cash flows, which are not all the same. We've gone over annuities before, but now we have cash flow. An annuity has the same cash flow, but this is uh, this has different cash flows. And also, we're going to figure out uh, how to do it at the beginning period and the end of period. So, um, for those of you that are are taking my finance class. This is problem 4-16 in the textbook. So let's go ahead and read the problem. Suppose Jennifer deposits $500 in the account at the end of this year, $400 at the end of next year, and $300 at the end of the following year. If her opportunity cost is 7.5%, how much will be in the account immediately after the third deposit is made? So that's sometime in the future. How much will be in the account at the end of three years as the deposits are made at the beginning of each year? So we're given R is 7.5%. And A, I'm going to know, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of separate this out into cash flows because it's a little bit easier. Uh, so I'm going to say hand a period and the cash flow received. And it goes 0, 1, 2, 3. So in this first problem, the first one is the end of period one year, uh, the end of period one. So it's 500. 400 and 300 these three numbers and there is nothing nothing given at the beginning of the period of one which should be the end of period of zero so i can highlight these and make that dollar okay so for part b so i'm going to copy this and paste it change this to a b now these are given at the beginning of the period which is the end of period zero so all three of these would shift up right and I want to replace it, and now this is zero. Okay, so all I did is shift them all up to the beginning of the period. So what we want to find, we want to find a the future value, what it is, and we want to know what the future value is on on uh, B. So for a solution, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and highlight these three, make a bold and underline. Okay, so for part A, I'm just going to copy A down here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate what the future value of each one of these cash flows are. So I'm going to say this equals the future value. And the first thing it asks for is the rate. So the rate is up here. Now I want to hit F4 to make this an absolute reference. And it puts dollar signs in front of it. And that's going to basically make it so when I copy the formula down, this does not move along with it. And what's the number of periods? Well, what's a, so we're going into the future one, two, three. But the easy way to do this, since I'm going to copy it down, I'm going to say it equals this. And I don't want this to move, so I'm going to go F4 minus zero, which is three. That would be three periods of the future, because three minus zero is three. And the payment is zero. And the present value is right here. And the type we don't need. And so we'll just leave it alone, and I'll go enter. Okay, so now if I copy this down, these are the different. So 577, $500 worth 577.81, th two periods in the future, 400 is worth 430, one period in the future, and 300 is worth 300, zero periods in the future. So now I can do the sum. So the answer is $1,307.81. Now we don't want the answer to be negative, so I'm going to go ahead and put it, I'm going to flip the sign on it by putting a negative in the front. So that's the answer to A. Okay. Now I can copy B down, and I will put it right here. And it might just work if I just copy all these formulas. So I can copy, paste. And sure enough, that comes out right because I did all the formulas relative and I did them correctly. Okay, so let's go ahead and put the formulas here so you can see them. Okay, and so it's as easy as that. All right, and that's it for now. Thank you.